Millions of baby boomers are approaching retirement or have already given up their jobs, but many do not want to kick back. Juliana Goldman is with one man who is reinventing retirement in a Washington, D.C. suburb. Juliana, good morning. Good morning. Well, it's here in this workshop where a former biomedical engineer has turned himself into a mechanical sculptor. Seth Goldstein's work has received international acclaim, but as a retiree, he builds for passion, not a paycheck. 75-year-old Seth Goldstein has always liked working with his hands. So when he retired from the National Institutes of Health 13 years ago, he wasn't interested in just sitting around. I like making things that move, mechanical things. And then, we, then the question was, well, what am I going to do? And my wife, Paula, came up with the idea. She went out of a clear blue sky, she says, why don't you make a machine that ties a tie? There are about 500 moves. <laughs> Three years later, his tie tying machine came to life, and his new career as an artistic inventor took shape. Yes! <laughs> it's one of three machines he's built in his basement. Is this what you thought retirement would be like? I thought I would never retire, to tell you the truth. I thought they'd have to drag me out of that place. Goldstein is charting a course for the baby boomer generation born after World War II. Census figures show there are about 76 million baby boomers, and according to the American Association of Retired Persons, over the next 14 years, about 8,000 people a day will turn 65, and more than half plan to retire soon after. For retirees, finding a purpose, and not simply slowing down, is critical to remaining happy and healthy. Dr. Nancy Schlossberg is a professor emerita at the University of Maryland and author of Revitalizing Retirement. Seth is lucky. He has had this passion forever. The unlucky ones are the ones who have a passion about their work and they don't see any way to translate that in retirement years. Schlossberg says retirement is like graduating. You have some people when they graduate from college, they know exactly what they want to do. Others are searching. Others are struggling. I retired in 2001. Is that right? <laughs> One of those who searched is Seth's wife, Paula. She too was an engineer who retired a year before her husband. Retirement was a gift in many ways to me. It became an opportunity for me to explore, well, what is it that, how am I wired? She tapped into her creative side, dabbling in nature sculpture and photography, and also writing plays. I spent a lot of my early years in retirement just exploring lots of different things to see what it was that uh, gave me that same kind of pleasure and enjoyment as I saw in Seth. Seth is the first to acknowledge his machines don't provide any commercial value, but for him, it's about something greater. It's the challenge, I think. The violin and the tie tying machine, they, they, they're just great ideas. And just the concept of doing it, you know, it's just so neat. One of Seth's sculptures is currently on display at the American Visionary Art Museum in Baltimore. And Gail, Seth spends about four hours a day, six days a week here in his workshop. Wow, what fun. Before I met, before you introduced us to wife, Paula, I thought she was trying to come up with something for Seth to do to keep him busy. <laughs> but then you meet her and you realize she's cheering him on and they both seem to have a great time. And, and the interesting thing, you wonder if Seth did this with the intent of making money, he could probably come up with something big. Yeah. Amazing. Passion, curiosity. Tiny. Pursuit, purpose. Yeah, pursuit. Yep. You could do that. Go, Seth. Juliana, we thank you.